Hey guys, welcome back. It's Chad. And Brad. And Dr. Bueno. And we're back with another episode to talk about the brain peptide. So tune in where we're gonna introduce you to your non-toxic cells. This, this peptide is very interesting to, to me because my, my, my grandmother actually died when I was 14 years old of Alzheimer's disease. And they said it was basically a, a huge buildup of plaque in, in her brain. Could this peptide, Cebrolysin, could it have helped her in any way, Dr. Bueno? Wow, that's a, a sad story, Chad, and I'm sorry that happened to you. But you know, the reality of it is, is that if we go back to 1906, uh, a doctor by the name of Alzheimer was actually studying patients who had certain mental illnesses. And when they died, they did the studies in the brain. And what they found was that exactly what you mentioned was plaquing in the brain. Uh, that what occurred was it stopped neurons from communicating with each other. So we fast forward to 1949 and we have another scientist by the name of Herrer in Austria who was trying to find a cure to that lack of connection. And he, what he noticed was that our brain stopped producing this compound called cerebral lysis. Okay. And from that came the compound cerebral lysin that we have now, which is a combination of numerous peptides to help us heal. Is there like three different peptides that help with this generally? Is there Yes, there is a combination of three what we call neurotransmitter secretagogues. Uh, each one of them has a specific function. Uh, one of them is brain derived. Obviously, it repairs brain tissue, right? Gray matter. The other one is glial cell. Glial cell means any connective tissue that has to do with nerve and neurons connectivity. And the last one is ciliary. Ciliary means that it's more like a stem cell. It has a proliferative mode in which it can create numerous things or become something different. So if you have a gray matter problem, it can become that. If you have a neural problem, it can become a neural connectivity tissue. And you have a natural myelin sheath, it can also become that to heal whatever problem we have in the neural system. Peptides are so amazing, they heal. It's not, this is not, these are not Band-Aids. No, this is an absolute healing mechanism, long-term. Now granted, every long-term mechanism has its end. Right. But people who've taken it still have positive effects three to six months after they stop taking it. But the reality of it is, is if you know you have a predisposition, why would you stop taking it? Right. Oh, no, I have to take it like, it'd be like a multivitamin at that point. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So what you're saying, I know this is approved for use for strokes and head traumas and uh, dementia, but you can also use it as a preventative. It's good for people to yes, prevent absolutely. So disease. When we talk about being approved, right, in the United States, cerebral lysis is still in the let's see what it can do stage, but it's actually approved in 50 different countries in Europe, including Russia, uh, India, and many other countries for just what you mentioned, which is strokes, traumatic brain injury, and dementia and Alzheimer's. Here, we're using it more as a peptide because people can come and have access to it through people like us who are introducing this to the population. Wow. So this would be good for somebody that has a genetic predisposition to maybe Huntington's or Alzheimer's or uh, Parkinson's disease? Yes. No matter what part of the brain, the problem is if we can increase connectivity between those neurons, it will get better. Will it fix it? Will it 100%? We don't know yet. It all depends on the individual, but it also works for autism, for ADD, ADHD. It helps for people who have cerebral palsy. So yeah. it is a multimodal peptide. Brad, to recap Cebralysin, as far as efficacy, how long someone should be on it, um, what's your thoughts on that? Well, it seems to be very effective for people that are either trying to use it for cognitive ability or to treat, uh, you know, strokes or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's-like symptoms, neuro disease. Um, it's very well tolerated by everybody. And um, if you're using it for cognitive reasons, we, we probably want to stick to shorter amounts of times, maybe around three months. But if you're using it to treat chronic disease like Alzheimer's or a stroke or something like that, you might want to uh, go on treatment a little bit longer. You probably stay on it indefinitely. That, that, that's you can time. stay indefinitely, yes. I mean, one of the main benefits of it is that it increases brain cell communication. And that doesn't come at a short period of time. It also increases and prevents brain dead cells. So the longer you are on it, your brain cells are going to maintain their viability for as long as they can, right? Keep Apoptosis is going to Keep happen, yes, right. but it lengthens that period. Right. And the more brain cells we have, the smarter we're going to be. And so so, so this peptide actually will. It will raise, raise my IQ. Yes, it will. Oh. It will raise your IQ.
Hey guys, join us next episode as we'll be breaking down the peptide called Matsi. It's an energy peptide that deals with our mitochondria. The Japanese have been using it for decades. Tune in next week to find out why.